Today on the Hex Phenom Gamescast, we are going to talk about some WWE 2K22 DLC news. We're going to talk about the new Ricochet anti-cheat coming to Call of Duty Vanguard and Call of Duty Warzone. The new GTA remaster leaked information. This game just keeps on leaking and so much more. The worst kept secret in gaming is continuing. Keep it locked right here to the Hex Phenom Gamescast to learn more. What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Hex Phenom Gamescast, the show where JP and I bring you the video game news you need to know each and every week. It goes live every Saturday on YouTube.com slash Hex Phenom, on the new Hex Phenom Gamescast YouTube channel, and on podcast services around the globe. Still not Apple Podcasts for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. I was going to say, what's up? Is Apple I've, doing it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I've resubmitted it three times now, and they don't even deny it. It just... They don't, they don't approve it at all. Like nothing. They don't do anything with it. Yeah, I the think door. the problem might be that. I don't know. The only thing I can think of is maybe they like. Have on their back end somewhere that I had two previous podcasts that I stopped posting to and they might be punishing me for that in some weird way. I don't know if that's a thing that Apple does. If you guys know, wow. please let me know. But like. I don't know what else to do, but it's on literally every other podcast service you could think of. And if it's not, then please let me know. And we'll get it um, on there. But yeah, Apple playing really hard to get for some reason, but that's okay. We love you, Apple. We'll be there soon. Apple, I, I bought the iPhone 13. I think you, I think I we think, can make a trade deal I, I here. I think we can work something out. I think we can work something out. But uh, yeah, so... That's where it goes live. I'm one of your hosts, Joshua Wojcik, a.k.a. Hex Phenom, and I am joined by my co-host once again, the Abstract Rocker, JP. JP, welcome back to the show. I know, right? It feels good to be back. Uh, I was on a working adventure for a week in Ohio, so as you can imagine, I, I, missed, uh, I missed quite a few games that came out, but you bet your ass I've been playing Far Cry 5, and you bet your ass I've been playing Back for Blood. Far Cry 6. Oh, Far Cry 6, my bad. I'm totally, totally getting caught up. It's probably because I tend to forget Far Cry 5 even exists because of how just shit it was. Oof, but shots we, fired. But, but we, we, got, shots we, fired. We, we got Far Cry 6, and I, I gotta say, it, it's my favorite was Far Cry 3, but I can already tell you, Far Cry 6 has already taken it. I and talked about the game the at length game. last week. So. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, the, the game is just honestly perfect. I, I don't know. Far Cry 5 just isn't even a real Far Cry game to me, so... Uh, New Dawn was really, really cool. I enjoyed that a hell of a lot more. That made up for Far Cry 5. Besides Joseph C, <coughs> that was the only good thing with that. But now we have one hell of a hostile game, Far Cry 6. Got Yara. Got the uh, amazing Gus Frain actor playing... Giancarlo Esposito. Esposito. And, um, yeah, other than that, Back for Blood, I, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, it would be Left 4 Dead 4, but obviously... Valve is not involved. Wouldn't it be Left 4 Dead 3? No, they made a third Left 4 Dead. At least I thought they did. I don't think they did. But let's, sw- let's look into this. I was going to say, I thought they did. Left 4 Dead. So that's why it was called Back for Blood. <laughs> when you search Left 4 Dead 3, it literally pops up all, Back- the, sh- all the shopping <laughs> stuff for Back for Blood. So what's the point of Back for Blood then? Literally, Back for Blood gameplay and info. Left 4 Dead 3. Left 4 Dead successor. Left 4 Dead 3 gameplay. Back for Blood. Yeah, Left 4 Dead 3 successor. I'm pretty sure there was a Left 4 Dead 3, because that doesn't Essentially, Left 4 Dead 3 gameplay, Back 4 Blood. Huh. Why Back 4 Blood isn't called Left 4 Dead 3. So yeah, it must be... I don't understand why it's called Back 4 Blood, then, because everybody was talking about it being a sequel for that reason. Well, I think, I, not that I really care. I didn't I play think the Xbox. 4 is because, if you remember, it was Left 4 Dead. Yeah, that's why I'm like, huh. Well, that's, that's so really Back weird. 4 Blood makes a lot of sense when you think yeah. about it that way. Plus, uh... Because I remember it was Left... Because it was... The, I remember the cover the was Left hand. 4, and then the thumb... Pulled off of yeah, the Thomas yeah, that's why I thought, yeah, I thought they made a third one, but I guess not. That's really weird. Uh, to be fair, though, I never really Valve, paid attention the way, to The that. way I know that is because Valve has never made a game and called it 3. And Valve owns Left 4 Dead. So they have uh, Portal 3 doesn't exist. They made a third Half-Life, Half-Life game, but they called it Half-Life Alex. There's no Portal 3. There's no Counter-Strike uh, 3. There's no nothing. Nothing ever goes 3. Th- Valve hates trilogies. They hate them. Well, there's no Team Fortress 3. Well, that <laughs> sucks. 
to be fair to me though, I didn't really give a shit about Left 4 Dead. Um, I mean, like, it was an Xbox. I, it, it was an Xbox exclusive, really exclusive so I couldn't even really play it. Yeah, um, I played it at friends' houses a couple times. Yeah. It was fun, but I never really got into it. Yeah, like I got to see, I got to see my friends like play it and stuff like that, but it, it never really struck me as anything I'd buy. That's why I thought it was like with Back for Blood. I thought it actually was literally going to be the fourth Left 4 Dead game. Just because Valve is just weird, but I didn't realize they never did a trilogy, so... I don't... I, they've never, like, said that they're devoutly against it, but, like, at this point, you'd have to assume that they are if they've literally never made a three. Like, they've never made anything a three. And a th any games that they have that they're... It's the third in the series, it's never called three. Like, Counter-Strike Global Offensive basically is Counter-Strike 3, but it's not called three. And the same thing God, with um, well, really Half-Life Alex is it's basically Half-Life 3, but it's not called Half-Life 3. Well, all right. So I guess yeah, Valve, Valve, created, uh, so Valve created that problem entirely. But uh, yeah, essentially, it's just Left 4 Dead with a new name. Um, it's interesting knowing there was not a Left 4 Dead 3 after all this damn time. But uh, it was rumored yeah. for so long, just like with every other Valve game getting a 3, especially Half-Life 3. Yeah, I was going to say... Um, that, that's but, interesting yeah. but yeah i've been i've been playing back for blood and i think it's i think it's amazing and i finally have a reason to care about that franchise i still i, I would count it honestly as a left 4 dead game it literally is a clone of left 4 dead and you can play the original characters so that's cool, that's it, cool it, it's, ba it's basically left 4 dead 3 then since you know there wasn't a real three thank you valve that's <laughs> so what have you been playing uh I'll keep it short and sweet because it's games that I've talked about before. I've been playing pretty much exclusively Far Cry 6, uh, Cold War, and I mean, I guess I te technically haven't talked about it on the show, but uh, I've also been playing Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel, which I always play with my nephew from, from time to time. Uh, uh, I taught my nephew how to play that game. That's like the only video game he really knows how to play, other than Minecraft, but... I'd say he definitely did good. But uh, yeah, not he bad, loves Crash Team choice. Racing Nitro Fuel. We play it a ton. We only play offline, so I still, even though I've sunk like three or four hundred hours in the game at this point, I still don't have everything unlocked because we only play offline, so it's hard to earn coins. But uh, yeah. I'm slowly grinding away at it. I love that game. I want a CTR two more yeah. than probably more than almost anything in this world, but I don't know <laughs> if we'll get it anytime soon, if at all. Uh, I want that, and I want a Crash Bash remaster or something like Crash. The, you know, I Wumpa have a League feeling a this Wumpa but... League thing might be like a Crash Bash successor of some type. I really if, don't know. It could easily fit. I've been thinking about it. We're kind of strapped on time, so I won't get into the whole bullshit that the Crash PR team has been doing over the last couple of months because it's questionable to say the least. But <laughs> In yes. I love CTR Nitro Fueled. It's one of my favorite games to go back to. It's even installed on my PS5, even though there's no enhancements at all. I mean, it loads a little bit faster, but like not noticeably i mean it's also the only console i have right now other than my switch <laughs> but because i gave my nephew my ps4 but that's neither here nor there cold war zombies forsaken has been a lot of fun uh i got i played a game of forsaken i got to round 101 that was that was i basically did like a round 100 speed run it only took me like two hours it was kind of uh, boring yeah, but i was just like yeah. eh. i like the map a lot it's but just i, I like the overall map it definitely is really easy. There's it a ton is, of rounding spots. Yeah, it's... Uh, and in it's Solo, they, they'll, they're, I think they'll probably patch... Well, actually, I don't know. With how close we are to Vanguard, they might not even have time to patch it. But it's not, a, it's not an exploit, but there is a really easy way to get to round 100 using the ray gun with PhD and Ring of Fire. <laughs> There's this one room that you can sit in that it just makes all the zombies spawn super fucking fast, and you can just keep constantly re-upping your Ring of Fire and then going through with the ray gun. Not so that's, that's a ton of fun. I've been grinding through some of the season challenges. All that stuff that I love to do, getting the camos on the new weapons, that stuff. And then Far Cry 6, I talked about it a lot last week, but I basically sit in the same place as I did last week. It's a ton of fun. I've been having a lot... This is my first Far Cry game, by the way, if you guys missed last week's episode. Um, oh, yeah. It's a good time to get on Far Cry, man. But uh, the, literally my only... The only bad thing I have to say about the game is I am still not a big fan of the whole ammo system. Um... You guys can go back and check out last week's episode where I kind of dive deep into that. But, uh, yeah, it's annoying having to constantly switch weapons uh, with through the pause screen to always have the ideal weapon for each situa situation. It gets annoying having to pause the game every, you know, especially when you're in bigger encounters where you're encountering all the different enemy types at once. It can get annoying, but I don't know. 
I'm still having a ton of fun regardless, so. Hell yeah, man. Definitely not a bad time, and, um... I gotta say, Far Cry, I, I think they excelled in every way to the point where it definitely beats 3 without a doubt. Um, it took a lot of things and fundamentals for that to happen, but they knocked everything out of the park. And to tell you the truth, I think now it's time to rebuild Far Cry 3 and the Far Cry 6 engine and put out that remaster that people will shit bricks over. But I would definitely play the shit out of uh, it. I think it's time. It definitely seems like they evolved to the point where it could probably easily happen. Um, I mean, they have Be the Villain, where you could be Voss, you could be uh, Pagan... You could be Joseph, so uh, yeah, that that's gonna be just that. And since it's the best part of Far Cry Five, because I love shitting on that game so much, it's gonna be amazing to see Joseph Seed become who he was before all the Montana crap happened. But yeah, so I'm very very excited. I I can't say enough good things about Far Cry Six. Um, I could probably sit here for hours and probably talk about it. It's a really damn big game. In fact, the map is probably five the times is, the size of the Grand Theft Auto V. Huge. It is huge. Just when you, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on the main map, and then I looked, I'm like, wow, I'm on this little torpy island in the bottom left corner. It's wow. like, oh yeah, I'm, I've the game's finally opened up, and then you zoom out to the map, and there's and you're just, like, wow, um, yeah, and there's so like, many, Jesus. so many allies to get, so many bosses to fight, and they all make sense. Unlike Far Cry Five, but enough for me bashing Far Cry Five. I can go on with hours for that, but. What kind of news stories we got going on? Well, I meant to do this at the beginning of the show, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right here and put what I'm about to say at the beginning of the show. So sorry, little how the sausage is made right here. I'm going to clap so I know where this clip is. Okay. I'm going to cut that, put that at the beginning of the show. But, yeah, so that's what we're going to talk about. So, so hello! Because <laughs> I know all of the WWE people are here for the WWE news. We'll get that out of the way real quick. Bad Rose over at Wrestling Attitude says, Recent talent releases ruined plans for WWE 2K22 DLC. The downfall continues before the game's even revealed. Amazing. And I'm not going to lie, guys, this was <laughs> this was when I made the video months ago saying WWE 2K22 coming. has a big problem. This is the kind of shit I was talking about. Yep. So let's get into it. 2K Games is relaunching WWE's video game franchise with WWE 2K22 after taking a year off, but it hasn't been a smooth process. <laughs> a new report from Mike Straw of Sports Gamers smooth. Online noted that because WWE released several wrestlers over the past few months for budget cut reasons, it has hurt plans for WWE 2K22's DLC. It was said a minimum of four release superstars on August 6th were slated to be DLC for the upcoming game. Former Nor NXT North American champion Bronson Reed was supposed to be the centerpiece of one of the DLC packages. Fellow NXT stars such as Bobby Fish, Jake Atlas, and Leon Ruff were also released alongside Reed on this date. Also, at least two DLC packs were scrapped over the last four months because of the changes to the roster. There have been discussions about switching to a roster update service instead of DLC package releases. They should really do that. I heard that was on the table. Straw previously broke the news that 2K22 will feature a GM mode, which hasn't been done since 2007. 2K Games has noted in the past that more information about the game will start coming out in January before the release in March 2022. So, a lot that we can dig into on that, GP. I probably might just keep it nice and quick, because, I don't know, as time goes on, I'm kind of losing interest in WWE 22 for the... Um, okay, so, we all knew this was going to happen, and if you didn't, <laughs> if you didn't think that this was going to happen... I'm sorry, but you, you got to be out of your mind. It's just the way the world is. WWE is literally releasing all these people, and 2K is just sitting there trying to clean up the fucking pieces behind it and you know make something good for us, the players. So, uh, dark. So as time goes on, it really makes you wonder. Like we've always said, this game could literally be the greatest thing since sliced bread. But if there's no roster, what's the point of GM mode? What am I gonna manage? A roster of cause that's not that's not gonna happen um so the free roster update i think would actually be great that was uh, originally supposed to happen if i recall that was supposed to happen all the way back i think it started in uh smackdown versus raw 2009 there was supposed Damn. to be free roster updates and uh 
That never happened, but it was in the game. And the funny part was, if you downloaded the for the roster update, it erased your whole entire roster. So, oh, uh, so that was beautiful. amazing. Yeah, reset everybody back to whatever the hell they were on when the game launched, and that that was incredible. Beautiful. Incredible. Um, that Thirteen was, out of ten. That was incredible. I, I avoided a lot of my friends. Unfortunately, got caught in that when Ted DiBiase had been born and like all the small end of DLC that they first started. That was the first game for DLC, by the way, too. That's going way back. But um, yeah, so uh, I think it'd be pretty cool if they salvaged that idea and actually made something really cool in terms of a patch update that would give you the roster update. Um, the problem is, though, like I said before, GM mode's coming back. But if everybody's released by the time the game comes out, what the hell's the point in playing it? Yeah. You know, I mean, it could be the greatest game ever, but it's not going to deliver, and that, that could be anyone's fault. It's not only 2K, it's just 2K's making the game, so 2K's going to get the fall for it, no matter what happens. As if the as if Ronnie 2K and other people go, yeah, you got to, yeah, that, yeah, that Reed guy, oh, I got to go. <laughs> to be fair, I don't think Ronnie 2K Ronnie has 2K's anything to do with probably even involved in WWE, but you know they'd be like, Ronnie, at Ronnie 2K, why is Bronson Reed not in this game? <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if people tweet at him about stuff like that. But Ronnie, where the I've never the once. Room I mean, goes? granted, I don't follow him, but I've never w- once seen him interact with anything to do with WWE. So I don't even think he's involved with <laughs> it. But big, whatever. It's like Ronnie, where the hell's my walk? But yeah, so it's like kind of similar to what JP said. I mean, granted, like because of the type of content that my channel is mostly based around when it comes to the WWE Universe stuff. I kind of have no choice but to buy the game, no matter how I feel about it. I'm so sorry. But, I mean, I'm in a similar place to GP where, like, yeah, like, yeah, great. Like, a couple months down the line, I'm sure almost every single release superstar will have a, a great call on community creations. But the problem with that is, is then you have to go through and download them. And not all of them have the move sets assigned and not all of them have the right entrances assigned. So you have to go through and fix that. And no one's going to have their actual like music and trons in the game that was released. So you're going to have all generic bullshit for them. It's yep. not the same as like actually having somebody in the game. Like you can get close by looks, but like and and move set. But you don't get the full deal, which sucks. Yep. And so that was one of the things I was worried about. But then also I was worried about how is this going to affect the rest of the game? Because now with every single release, they have to go delete those people, delete them from delete them from any sort of like menu images and. You know, delete their like any references to them in any of any of the modes, any of the tutorial screens, any of any loading screens in the my career like if they were in cutscenes even in the background even if they weren't the main focus of the cutscene they have to go through and re-record the cutscene or delete them from the cutscene if they were a major in. part yeah if they were a major part of a storyline like i'm sure probably the fiend was and probably braun Strowman was they have to go through they have to get a new superstar to fill that slot they have to have that superstar come in and re-record those voice lines so that they can take that spot They have to have the commentators come in and re-record voice lines for that match so that you don't have Michael Cole talking about The Fiend while you're facing Dolph Ziggler. It's just so much bullshit that happens with every single person that got cut, and they've cut over 100 people in the last two years. Something something tells me, like 2K19 with Big Cass and a few other people, something tells me they'll be idiots and leave the data on the disc... And then you're going to see people pull the models out and sub them in for someone else. And you're going to. Oh, I'm sure that's going to happen. I'm hoping that they just clean the whole thing up, because if not, you're going to have people hacking and all this shit. And that's another thing, like you were saying, too, is like. Sure, I can go in in GM mode and universe mode and manage a bunch of cause, but I don't really want to. It's just pointless. At that point, I'd rather go back to SVR 2007 and and just create content that people already have formulas for. But ha. Here he is in SVR 2007. Um, and w- you know, it's just when it comes to the live roster updates, I I don't know if I would prefer that necessarily in like in place of DLC. I would kind of maybe I'm being selfish. I think it'd be cool to have that plus DLC where the roster updates are more like. I feel like they said they were going to do this for one of the more recent WWE games where it would be like every couple weeks they would adjust overalls based on storylines and whatnot and who's, you know, winning and losing. 
I could have swore for like 16 or 17 they said they were going to do that and then never did. I don't know. Yeah, they were planning on it. And then obviously like live updates. So like when somebody gets a new gimmick, maybe in a couple weeks, their new attire and new songs or whatever could be in the game. That stuff is cool, especially because there's been so many complaints over the last couple of years of like. By the time the game comes out, it's so out of date because everything is constantly changing yeah. and shifting in WWE between costumes, gimmicks, whether they're on Raw, SmackDown, whether someone's champion, not champion, injury. Well, I guess injuries don't really matter, but you know what I mean. So it's like, also, I apologize if you guys can hear music in the background. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. And. Uh... But it sucks that we would get this instead of DLC. I think under ideal circumstances, you would want live roster updates and DLC to help bolster that. But I also understand why they don't want to commit to DLC packs because yeah, then they uh, stick themselves in the same situation of like, well, they might build a DLC pack. And then by the time it's set to release, like two of those people are released. And then it's like, well, fuck. Something tells me to be very disheartening to people, but I can already tell you it's probably coming like a free train. So these free roster updates, what's going to happen is when they put the patch out, they'll give you the <laughs> DLC. You won't have to pay in for anything, and that's it. There's no pass. You get whatever they give you, and that's the end of it. Um, I doubt you're going to see them put in, like, if Jeff Hardy gets a new attire, you'll see it in a month. Doubt it. I, I just think they don't give a shit enough to do that. Like, you'll probably end up seeing the DLC, uh, like, roster updates. They're probably going to be what's left of what would have been the DLC packs that you would have to pay for. But now it doesn't make sense because you waited too long. The game got delayed. They got removed and nobody's in the game. So uh, something tells me uh, something tells me that's exactly what you're going to see if they do these roster updates. They'll just be like, oh, roster update one featuring four superstars. There you go. And then people will go, well, what about Jeff Hardy's new attire? Ah, kid, you can go download on community creations. That's exactly what they're going to say. <laughs> That's the thing, too, is like it's sad, but yep. Yeah, because then what does live roster updates mean? Because you have a good point is that they're just going to give you DLC. if it's yeah, if it's costumes, you can already download it from community creations. So what else? Yeah, but they're playing with it. Yeah, by these updates, it's just going to be um, it's going to be just like SVR 2009's DLC. You were able uh, you had to pay for them, but it was called roster update number one. And you could buy the pack for eight bucks and it would have Ted DiBiase, Evan Bourne, and Charlie Haas. That was your roster update. Take it or leave it. And they were like, oh, well, anything else you guys want? Ah, you go on, you go on Community Creations, or I forget what it was known as back then. I think it was WB Creations. You download them, man. Um, but I don't know. Plus, you know, plus uh, with the looming factor of AEW coming out, I feel like I feel like they're just going to the try AEW to roster is going to be so fucking. Yeah, stacked, you, you could tell they're in trouble, man. Like, like Owen Hart's going to be in this game. Like, how the hell do you top that? I, I just their their roster. I mean, you got CM Punk, Danielson, and then you got like Omega, Allen, and I can go on for days, but. You have such and a I don't even like. Roster. <laughs> I'm not even that much of like an AEW fan. Like I barely watch their stuff. It's just like they have their roster have, is going to be stacked. Yeah, they they have it. Uh, this, this like I said, man. I, I think <laughs> probably no how Sorry. good this game is. They're going to just <laughs> trample right over it immediately. That's basically how it's going to go. <laughs> probably, probably like half the roster that was cut from 2K22 is going to end up in the AEW game. They might as well have just like sent over the fucking models to Ukes and be like, "Here, you can fucking have them. We don't fucking need them anymore." Yeah, I'm dead serious. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I think the I think WWE Games is in trouble entirely. Um, they, I, this AEW game is going to come out at the right time. But. And then Vince McMahon's going to be pissed when this game doesn't sell and wonder why. And then, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, if I had the call, and he's be like, oh, damn, we're going to drop the license. I'm like, ah, oh, Vince, where are you going to go? Can't, can't go to the Ukes. They're already signed on a contract. Can't make two games of the same company like that. We're going to go to Electronic Arts. They make a bunch of good shit. That makes a lot of money. And money is good shit. It's good shit. Speaking of EA oh, and money, I'm ready. beautiful transition. We're going to go back to a little uh, news story that we talked about, or that I talked about last week. GP, in yes. case you didn't know, EA is thinking about dropping the name of FIFA for their fo football or, and or soccer video games. We didn't know why. Now we know why. Wait, wait, so you're FIFA reportedly every... wants to charge EA one billion dollars every four years to use the FIFA name. That that's not worth the money that it's printed on. What? 
What? FIFA, FIFA without FIFA. This is by Logan Plant over at IGN. We now have a clue to why EA Sports is considering changing the name of FIFA, its giant football franchise. Football. The New York Times reports that there's a dispute between EA and the developer of the FIFA games and FIFA, the World Football Organization. The disagreement is reportedly over cost and new revenue streams. This is a tweet by Daniel Ahmad. Uh, a new report in the New York Times states that the dispute between EA and FIFA is related to costs and revenue streams. FIFA wants to change or charge <sighs> EA double the amount, $1 billion plus every four years for the license and limit EA's ability to monetize the game itself. So does... according to the report, FIFA wants to charge EA $1 billion every four years to use the FIFA license in its game. Additionally, the organization wants to limit EA's monetization of the game. Last week, EA said that they're exploring the idea of renaming the EA Sports Football Games. EA also says the FIFA partnership is different is different than with their official partners, meaning the loss of the FIFA name wouldn't mean the loss of official teams and players. The license only gives EA the name, logo, and rights to use the World Cup within the game. So do they want a FIFA game or not? Because you can't charge someone to make a game for you a billion dollars. That's that's not how royalties go, and that's not how business goes at all. $250 million per game. And like FIFA, yeah. yes, makes yeah. a lot of money, but it's not. It is not, not fucking worth that. It's not worth that shit. You could just you could just literally call it EA Sports Football 2023. That's exactly what they're gonna do. It's gonna be EA Sports Football Club or EA. Or it's football. not gonna be soccer. It's gonna be football because that's so so much more popular. EA Sports in other Football regions. 23. It's gonna be like EA Sports Football or EA Sports yeah. Soccer or FC or something like that. But it doesn't really matter. They're not going to have to pay FIFA for the name anymore. So EA is going to make even more money off of FIFA. That means FIFA is so, not even going to get anything out of this. Literally, the only downside to EA is that they can't use the words World Cup in the game. Which they could just call it like the EA Sports Cup or yep. the EA fucking. Yeah, that's exactly how it's been. Like even back on NASCAR Thunder, they would call it like the Thunder. Cup I have a great idea that. for EA. They could call it the Sense of Pride and Accomplishment Cup. Print it. Send it off. EA Sports FC 23. Print the disc. Print it right now. Print it. I request the one billion dollars now. It's mine. It's mine. That's really. But yeah, just a quick little update. So now we know why FIFA wants to charge them one billion dollars every four years to use the name. They're they're fucking high. They gotta be high. Gotta be. Well, must be some good drugs. Some must good be. shit. Must be some good drugs. So must be some good shit. Okay, so another a bit of a smaller news story, but it has a big impact on this particular game. Marvel's Avengers starts selling XP boosters, angering players. This is by Michael McWhorter over at Polygon. Fans say the change goes against a pledge to only sell cosmetics. Marvel, Marvel's Avengers is now wow. selling XP boosts, paid consumable items called Heroes Catalyst in the game's marketplace as part of an update to Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics game that rolled out Thursday. The change isn't sitting well with Marvel's Avengers players, who say that the developers have gone back on its promise to only offer paid microtransactions for cosmetic items like skins and takedowns. This proof of said statement? Yep, they said it on stage at E3. <clears throat> oh, wow. Well, uh, well, <laughs> well, there's literally, like, the okay. biggest, like, a all right, most so, public amount of proof that they've uh, said this. All right, so... Why are they bullshitting, then? That's... They have yet... This wow. happened on what the October 8th. So literally a week ago, and they have yet to comment on it. So that's about how well it's going. The latest patch for Marvel's Avengers updated... Oh, wait, I already said that. I love that. Uh, yeah, they said it you can stage. purchase the consumables oh. with a one-day duration for 100 credits, a three-day duration for 250, or seven-day duration for 500 credits. That boils down to one day is... A, I think it's a dollar. Three days is $2.50, $2. Oh. and seven days is $5. That's actually very affordable. I don't know why people... Well, I don't know if they mentioned it in this article, but this... this Okay. That's a steal. If Call of Duty so, sold that, I'd buy so, it. Well, well, the biggest controversy is, one, not only did they say that they wouldn't do it, oh boy. that they promised it at E3, oh God. but this comes off the back of a couple of months ago where they nerfed the earning of XP by 50% because they said people were leveling up too quickly. And keep in mind, this is a multiplayer game where every hero has separate levels and there is now nine heroes in the game and each hero can go up to level 50 and then keep leveling up past that to get extra like prestige points that you could put into a new champion skill tree. So everybody has 50 levels times nine heroes. I'm not great with math. That's 450 levels right there, I think. 
It's something like that. Plus all the champion levels, and they said it, people were leveling up too quickly. That was a couple months ago, and now they're selling XP boosts in the store. After they promised they would only sell cosmetics. Wow, they are basically, in modern terms, they are fake as fuck. That, that, that's crazy. Yep. Um, that, okay, that, I... Price is good, but knowing that they literally killed the average XP flow to sell knockoff XP boosts, uh, I don't, that, that's, that's kind of corrupt and fake as hell. And, and this is all, they also added it, a, like, a, I think four days after the game got added to Xbox Game Pass. So, I'm not even reading off the article anymore, but basically a lot of fans think that they're just trying to get, squeeze one last, like, string of money out of the game before they just send it off to die because it did not sell well. As far as I know, they still haven't made their money back on the game. And then on top of that, it's just not a good game. Like, it's just straight up not a fun game to play. It's repetitive as fuck. Every hero feels the exact same. And like, I'm a Marvel fan. Like, I am a Marvel fanboy. Like, there is no reason that I should not like this game. And I hate Yeah, I was going to say, uh, a lot of my Marvel friends are, they're like, this game is trash. And I'm like, wow, this is, uh, this is pretty bad. I know how much you guys are looking forward to this game. It's just like all licensed games for the most part. It's absolute trash. Oh, there's a quote in the article from what they said was the reason that they nerfed XP months ago. Do you want to hear it? Sure. Quote, let's, let's bury him. Why not? The problem we were seeing and hearing which means that apparently fans were complaining about leveling up too much, JP. It was that you would immediately get more skill points that you had time than you had time to review, apply, and get used to before embarking on your next mission and gaining your next few levels, Crystal Dynamics said at the time. What kind of horseshit word salad is that? I don't know. I like it. Who, I... who <laughs> logs on a multiplayer game for the and first I'm, time and goes, I'm leveling up too fucking fast. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. I, <laughs> I can't. I'm, I'm fucking drowning in skill points here. You need to turn this down. Man, it feels like Call of Duty goes day one. I got a thousand squad points and I don't know what to do with them. How? I am so overwhelmed that my hero is getting more powerful. I can't deal with it. Like a fucking poor shit. That's absolute poor shit. I gotta admit, they're fake as fuck for that. Um... I could see if they didn't go out and say that, or say that last quote. I basically just, it, I'm just looking at them six feet underground, just with dirt being piled on them every time there's a thing. Oh, no microtransactions. Oh, leveling up too fast. Oh, oh game's dead. <laughs> oh, it's buried. Honestly, yeah. I think, uh, and like, I don't even mind like the cosmetics and like having to supplement the game that way, because all of the DLC content updates have been free. Which I mean, Nowadays, for a multiplayer game, you kind of have to do that so you don't split the player base. So this is like bare minimum stuff. But I understand having to supplement the game with microtransactions. So the cosmetics and stuff, even though I think they're horribly overpriced the way they are, great, whatever. I, bu I, I bought a couple, sure. I think it's funny knowing that there's XP boosters that just but curve it back XP to the XP boost. flow that they had before. When they, they nerfed, nerfed the XP a few months ago, and on top of that... They said before the game came out, we would never charge for anything other than cosmetics. They are a bunch of fucking liars, and they know it because they have not said anything a week later. They, kn they know what they did, and I, I, can, I am putting it out there right now. And they're fake Once fuck. their current roadmap comes to an end for, like, basically content that they've promised to release... Once they release all that, I think the game's done. I think they're not going to support it anymore. I, I, think think they, I, think, I think it's done. I think they're walking away from the table. I think Spider-Man is going to be the last character for the game. He'll be a PlayStation exclusive. Yeah. He'll get a couple of story missions. And then I don't remember if that's the end of the roadmap. They said they'll release a raid at some point. But after that, I think the game's dead. I don't think there's any reason to keep making content for it personally. I just think they... Uh... They fucked themselves. And I didn't even fuck, hate so. the game that yeah. bad before this, but I'm I'm done with it now. <laughs> Speaking of horseshit, dumb decisions, in my opinion, this one has been slightly more well received than the Marvel's Avengers stuff. Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pack subscription launches October 25th, costs fifty dollars a year. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I called that a long time ago. <laughs> Well, so this is just for just for background. The current Switch Online is twenty dollars a year. I think it's twenty five dollars a year if you have a you can have a family plan with up to I think 
either five or eight other accounts on it. So if you do that, it is a great deal. I don't think, that, but if you're if you're by yourself, twenty dollars a year is a horrible deal for this because you have to pay to play online, obviously. But all you get in return for that twenty dollars, other than playing online, is you get a selection of NES and SNES games for free on these two apps that you have to download onto your Switch. And there's pretty good games on there. Like, there's a... I don't know about how many. There's about at least 50... Excuse <coughs> me. Plus games in each. And there's, like, good games on there. There's, like, the Donkey Kong Country games, like Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, 3. Like, good stuff. A lot of shit stuff, too. But some good games. Try. They announced earlier this month in a direct that they would be adding Nintendo 64 games, Sega Genesis games to the service, but you would have to buy a higher tier of their online service, which is now this $50 a year tier. It's $80 a year now for the family plan, up to eight people. So 10 bucks a month, or, or 10 bucks a year, oh, yeah. if you split it between eight people. But I don't think it's worth it. Maybe some of you guys will. Let's read on about it. That's this so is by Anna Diaz over at Polygon. Well, let's hear about it. Nintendo revealed pricing details and launch date for its premium subscription tier for the Nintendo Switch Online service. Let Switch owners play multiplayer games online and offers access to a library of classic NES and Super NES games. The Online Plus Expansion Pack, which Nintendo announced in September, will cost $50 for an individual and $80 for a family. Nintendo will launch the service October 25th. In comparison... Their subscription tiers cost twenty. Their normal subscription is twenty dollars a year and thirty five for a family. The premium version includes, uh, a, the, brings a bundle of retro games to the Nintendo Switch from N sixty four and Sega Genesis. Nintendo also announced the Nintendo sixty four and Sega Genesis controllers for the Switch at, at a separate direct. Nintendo Switch Online expand, plus expansion pack will also offer access to the downloadable content for Animal Crossing: The New Horizons. Nintendo announced. That DLC, Happy Home Paradise, during a Nintendo Direct today. If you want to buy the DLC by itself, it is $24. So, that's, uh, well, yeah, I, I, it was funny. My friends were like, yeah, it's only 20 bucks for the year. I'm like, it's going to eventually be 50 Nah, Nintendo would never do that. Well, like, trust me, they'll do it. <laughs> well, the way this works is that you can still pay the 20 bucks a year. You can continue to do that. And you'll still get to play online and you'll still get the, the original Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. If you want the N64 and Genesis games, the only way to get them is to upgrade to the $50 tier. That's as kind of some, yeah, as a bonus that. for upgrading to the $50 tier, excuse me, you get the new Animal Crossing New Horizons deals. Ah. <coughs> 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 I'm sure you definitely edit that out. <laughs> Jesus. Woo! I think I'm alright. You also get the Animal Crossing New Horizons DLC for free. The DLC itself is 25 bucks, so if you were gonna buy the DLC, I guess this justifies itself for a year. But if you're not playing Animal Crossing or not interested in the DLC, your only reason for spending 30 extra dollars a year is for some N64 games and some Sega Genesis games. And personally, like, I understand people have a lot of nostalgia for the N64. I get it. I never owned one. I don't have any nostalgia for it. Sega Genesis, I did own one, but the only games I had for it were the Sonic games, so those are the only games I have any nostalgia for. But even then, I'm not going to pay 30 additional dollars to play Sonic 1, 2, and 3, which I've played how many times? Oh, yeah. On this, like, I'm not going to pay $30 to play it on the Switch, or I'm not going to pay $30 to play Mario Kart 64 on the Switch. I'd rather play Mario Kart 8, personally. <laughs> right, yeah, but I don't blame you. And so it's like, this tier is directed at a very, very specific audience, and that audience isn't me. So that's why I think it's a stupid decision. I understand there's a ton of people that are going to pay for this, and Nintendo's going to make a lot of money off of it. But my thing is... They're stepping out on what they originally said about online for Nintendo. <clears throat> My thing with Nintendo Switch Online 
is no matter what tier, the more expensive one, the cheaper one, and this still baffles my mind, JP. I don't know if you know this. You cannot have in-game voice chat on the Nintendo Switch when you're playing online. Well, Bluetooth. The only way to chat with people when you're playing online on the Nintendo Switch is to download an app on your phone. And when you're in a lobby with people in a game, you can open the app on your phone and enter voice chat through your phone. So you have to download a separate app on your smartphone to chat with people. And you would think, oh, okay. They're so <clears throat> behind the times, it's unbelievable, personally. But, like, if it was a party chat, at least, that you could talk no matter what game you're playing, I'd be not okay with it. But it'd be whatever. Yeah. It acts... <coughs> what the fuck? I'm dying. <clears throat> this man's dying. I think I'm losing my voice because I was screaming so much in this corn maze. I gotta power through. <clears throat> But, Man's got it. So, the voice chat in this app acts exactly like an in-game chat would in any other game. Where, like, when you go into a loading screen, it completely disconnects the chat and you can't hear or talk to anybody. When, you know, shit, like if somebody starts lagging in a game, their voice chat's also lagging, so you can't hear a damn thing they're saying. And it's just like... If you're going to go through the trouble of making us use a smartphone app, at least make it so that I can talk to them no matter the game we're playing. You know what I mean? Like, so they want me to pay the same price as PlayStation Plus for free games from like four console generations ago and still no voice chat. Whereas you pay 50 bucks a year for Xbox Live or PS Plus, you get, get the whole shit back. like five, three to five free games a month, depending on which service you get party chat. Well, party chats, you don't even need online for, I don't think. But you no. get the PlayStation Plus collection on PS5. You get, you know, every month you get these new free games that are like, yeah, some of them are old and some of them aren't great, but they're modern games like they're not N64 games that you've probably played a hundred times. I don't know, I just, uh, I just find it humorous where Nintendo's at. You get discounts this. for PlayStation Plus on, like, the PlayStation Store and stuff, like, Nintendo yeah, is literally, uh, yeah, sorry to keep cutting you up, but Nintendo's literally living in the year, like, 2007. Yeah, and, like, at the end of the day, this is why I don't buy Nintendo consoles anymore. The GameCube was the last, is, they're so far behind the times. Doesn't they're matter. so far yeah, up their own ass. Yeah, yeah, and they're up their own ass. I mean, it doesn't matter if they put out a, honestly, what they put out the Switch, it's been done before, it was called the PlayStation Portable. But, and the Vita, so it, it's nothing that new, it's just, it's new for Nintendo, and that's why the Nintendo people will think that it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, because they're so far back, and, you know, going back to the well for all the series, all the upgrades, I mean, you need an app for video game in voice chat, you need a Bluetooth, the Bluetooth doesn't even work, uh, their model is completely outdated. I don't know, you know, I, I just think you're starting to see the cracks form. On Nintendo's policies I, I think you're seeing the cracks form entirely maybe maybe you know they might get their head out of their asses a little bit or do I some or do some modern day upgrades and modernality that could really attract more people to them but if you're going to keep living in the past I mean you're only going to garner a certain amount of people See, the thing that sucks though is it's like that's why they don't play ball anymore it's I 100% like, see what you're saying but Nintendo is only going to get further up their own ass as long as they keep selling Game Busters. Like, and going back to the well. I don't even, like, I mean, yeah, but, <laughs> like, I mean, it's even like the Buster console, Buster. even the console itself is, like, very quickly set to cross the 100 million consoles mark, which I think it would be the fastest console to do so. And I mean, like, it is a family friendly console. Though. Yeah. And I mean, granted, like, yeah. I don't I don't know how they count it. I don't know if Switch Lite and Switch OLED and all that stuff is counted in with it. I don't really know. But like. And then plus, like, they have a crazy attach rate with games, and it's again goes back to the family friendly stuff. But like. Not yeah, they have to be doing game. something because like. 
say there's like, I don't know, 90 million Switches. Like the best selling Switch game has sold like 60 million units. There's no PlayStation 4 game that comes even fucking close to this PlayStation 4 exclusive game that comes even close to that. The closest thing probably is GTA 5. And I don't even know how many units that sold on PS4, but I would say like 25 million, which is still a fuck ton. But like, uh, that's not even half of like the 60 million people that have bought. I think Mario Kart 8 is the the best selling, or maybe it's Animal Crossing now. I'm not sure which one. I know Grand Theft Auto 5 had the top slot for the longest time. And it, it's going to take it back easily with the enhanced expanded, guaranteed. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's interesting. You know, that's cool that they're selling, but that doesn't mean it's good. I mean, I haven't, I haven't really cared about Nintendo since the GameCube. And I'm not saying that, that, Nintendo, <laughs> that Nintendo puts out bad games, but it's no, like... No, it's just they're inside of a box, and only certain people acquaint to that, then they'll show anything they want on those games. That's how it is. Um, the GameCube was so first party and third party based that everybody could have fun hell a lot of the games on the gamecube look better than ps2 and xbox you, you remember those yeah. days when nintendo well, I mean, with I the never, big boys i never i don't think i've ever actually played a gamecube oh, I, yeah. well no that's not true i played i think it was on like my last day of high school my uh i had a couple of friends that were in uh in band and they somebody brought in their gamecube at smash brothers melee and we literally sat in the band room all day and we're just doing like four player matches of smash the entire day of school, right. the, the entire last day of high school yeah. that was the only time i've ever played a gamecube yeah those those were the days when uh nintendo hung with the but big see boys. that was now the thing is the like same table that was the last time they were really on par when it came to power and like you said they were it was actually i'm pretty sure it was more powerful than the ps2 that granted time. it came out like a year and a half later yeah, but. yeah i gotta admit they had a and it had online secretly and it had all this other stuff but the thing was, that was when they hung with the big boys. Now they're not even in the same world, not even the same table. Like, it's it's kind of sad, really. I really wish, like, I, I mean, granted, they can't leave the other Switch systems behind, but like, I really would love to see a new Nintendo console that was like on par, power wise, with yeah. the modern day consoles. And I really don't know if we'll ever see that again because it's have- it's obvious that the next. Nintendo console is going to be maybe not called Switch 2, but it's going to be a similar thing to the Switch. Without a doubt, I'm sure they already had a draft of when the Switch came out. Sure I'm still take. surprised we haven't gotten a Switch Pro that's somewhat more powerful. But. Right. Yes, yeah, it should be interesting. But yeah, that model's garbage entirely with pricing and all. But yeah. Okay. Moving on. Oh boy. And. The- the industry's worst kept secret keeps getting leaked even after it's announced. Leaker claims GTA remasters look the same with minimal changes. This is by Sam Comrie over at Xerto.com. I don't know if I said that. Is that the article right. that I randomly sent you? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say it. Intro, I believe. I'm not, not sure. surprised this is how it turned out either after. Once, honestly, once I found out it's on last gen Switch and mobile, I'm like, there's no hope for this. Even so. last gen, like. Last could've, gen, maybe. Could have held up pretty well. But yeah. Switch and mobile, I was like, oh, shit. Since so uh, they say fuck. Switch and mobile, I'm like, this is, it's fucked. It's Granted, fucked. like, Unreal Engine is really good at scaling up and scaling down, but, like, for the most part, it's not really worth it to do that, even if it, even if the engine has the ability to do it. Granted, Rockstar loves money, so, of course, they're going to release it on as many fucking things as possible. But, yep. this should have clued people into the fact that it wasn't going to be the remasters crazy. they want. GTA fans are cautiously waiting for the first look at the remastered GTA trilogy. Rockstar Games promised to deliver, quote, graphical improvements and modern gameplay enhancements to these classic titles. Fans may need to temper their expectations, however. Remasters are the next big trend, it seems. And they didn't do it. (laughs) Rockstar Games are following the steps of Demon's Souls, Alan Wake, and others with their definitive edition of the original GTA trilogy. Collecting GTA 3, Vice City, (coughs) and the gold standard... San Andreas, together in a polished package, and the remastered versions are set to potentially debut in December. The notion of a revamped trio is enticing, especially for longtime fans, but it seems the fans may need to temper their expectations when it comes to just how notable these changes will be. Oh god, here it comes. Leaker claims it will look the same. It's widely known at this point that Rockstar's Dundee Studio has brought the original renderware-made games into Unreal 4. Due to how old the original games are, reworking them in the original engine simply couldn't be done. 
So how fresh and modern are they? According to the supposed leaker, the upcoming remasters will largely look the same with slight enhancements to faces, better animations, and better lighting overall. This might be disappointing to some who are looking for a, something more akin to the realism of GTA V or Red Dead 2. That's all they have to do. Yep. Nevertheless, the leaker also claims that enhancements to the now dated shooting mechanics have been implemented to have a more GTA 4 or 5 feel. Boat shooting has a free aim and auto aim that feels more like 4 and 5, along with classic mode with the old lock on rolls. Interestingly, GTA Cheater Man also notes that the supposedly high launch price of $50 is, quote, just a placeholder and will be between 30 or 40 When the trilogy releasing across a large range of platforms, it would make sense for the next-gen versions to be in a higher price bracket. Not really in this case. Not really, unless there is enhancements to it. Not unless you did something on next-gen, bro. I'm not paying you extra money for that. I, I'm going to be really mad if it's not even, like, graphical improvements. It's just like, oh, higher frame rate and adaptive triggers... That's not worth an extra 10 bucks, dude. Like, I love the adaptive triggers. I love a high frame rate, but 10 extra bucks for that. I think it's funny knowing that throughout all this, my PS4 and anyone's PS4, any console that has this on became more rare, and that's the fact that if you have the original up-res games from the PS2, just HD resolution, then you have a rare console because they took it off the market, so you buy this new trash. I don't know if it's game. actually officially off the market yet, but they, yeah, if, if you guys missed uh, last week's today. episode... Rockstar announced that they, when they announced the trilogy, they're like, oh, and by the way, we're going to hide this right here in the fine print. We're also taking off the original PS2 versions of these games from the stores, yeah. because when you want to play these games, we want to make you pay the higher price for them. Yeah. So, so uh, fuck uh, you, is basically what they said. It's basically like Red Dead Redemption 2. That game fell from grace because... They, they went way too over. I did not like Red Dead 2. They, they, they went way too overboard. Besides, the story was amazing. Fucking uh, horse balls. The story was amazing. It's just... The fact is, they turned it into Cowboy Simulator, and all they had to do was just remaster RDR, which they're going to be doing, which I can't wait to see. That's going to be great. They, hopefully, they actually... That's going to really, be great. Turns out exactly the same as this does. Hopefully, they actually really do a remaster, because, you know, a remaster is when you... You know, retexture and redo the game, and you know, you you remaster like a music track in the studio. But seeing how they Rockstar are, better not release. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah, but Rockstar right. better not release anything after yeah. GTA trilogy definitive edition, like HD chapter prologue, whatever the fuck. <laughs> after they release that <clears throat> and expand it and enhance, I don't want to see it a fucking Rockstar logo next to anything that's not GTA Six after that. Yep. Once they release GTA 6, you can remaster every fucking Rockstar game ever made. I don't care. But you know, put like, out GTA 6 first. You, you know, the thing is, uh, the remaster, people wanted a remaster. I'm telling you, as soon as the images come out, as soon as the trailer drops, you are going to see, honestly... It's going to be a shit, it's gonna be a shit show on par with the two expanded and enhanced trailers so far, if not possibly worse. To tell you the truth, that might actually give Infinite Warfare's debut trailer a run for its fucking money on YouTube. Well, a lot of people are well, going down. I don't. I don't know if I'd say that. Oh, I, don't I, know. I think it could be close, it but I don't. Be, I don't know. It could be close because for years, and you've seen it. You can go on YouTube right now. I think the difference will be. I think the difference will be. I mean, hopefully, I would think that people are smart enough at this point, after all these leaks, to know that it's going to be a disappointment. Oh god. Whereas man. Infinite Warfare, we didn't really know it was going to be disappointing until we got the reveal. Oh, I, I mean, guess. granted, it leaked like the day before, maybe the morning of the trailer reveal. That it was going to be Infinite yeah, Warfare in space, but, like, the thing is, like, people were fucking shell-shocked with see, Infinite Warfare. The thing that is not going to go over well at all is the fact that people have already went in and literally made it on their own. With mods. With mods and everything. That Rockstar and, has and ceased and Rockstar, desisted and taken off. Yeah, and they've taken them off. You can see them on YouTube and everything, and you could probably get the mods on some other random market, but... The thing is, there's people that have single-handedly, let me repeat that, single-handedly remastered these three games. But you're telling me Rockstar and their studios can't even That's do the anything? That fucking baffles me, dude. You guys have one like 50, people, people on a team. Like, what the hell's going on? One here? or two people have made these games look just as good, if not better, than GTA, 5, GTA looks on, 5 looks on PC now. You know? And That's... rock an entire Rockstar studio. That's what upsets me. A Over lot. the course of, we don't even know how long, but even still, like... I don't even care when they got acquired. Crazy. It, it, honestly, it shouldn't matter, like... These people... If one or two it. people can do it in a couple years, an entire studio of Rockstar should be able to do it. In a year. No, no problem. You know, and uh, seeing how all they did 
is they just put it into Unreal Engine. They ported Engine it into Unreal Engine and, and messed it. with the you know, the lighting effects and you know um the thing is I'm telling you man when people see this they are going to be like nah, nah you, you got to be kidding me this this isn't a remaster this is just an upres and that's exactly literally the only thing that excites me about it is the better so, controls cuz I so upset that was why I never played the the GTA trilogy at all until I got San Andreas on PS4 and the thing that as much as I really liked the game, the thing that made it so hard to play for me was how archaic the lock-on aiming system was. And that was before we really had, like, a knack for free aim with, like, controllers and stuff, and there wasn't really, like, a universal it was, it was a different control era. scheme and stuff. It was a different era. In time. So it was the new dawn, basically. That, was, that made it really hard for me to get through, and that's why I never got very far into San Andreas. So new controls definitely excites me. But other than that, I'm just like... Eh? The thing is, if it looks the same, it doesn't matter if you have new controls or not. You're not going to be able to turn around quick enough the thing to do that's, it if it's still happening. The thing that's interesting to me <laughs> in, in that scary. article is that they say that there's going to be better animations, so that means we're going to be seeing... Gonna, I hope this isn't the case, but oh, I'm going to yeah. shit bricks if we still have these like low-poly models that just have high-fidelity like high fidelity textures... And just like these brand new, like super smooth animations is going to look so fucking stupid. That's exactly what on like yeah. the like square, the square ass character models. That's uh, that's exactly what's that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, mainly because. OK. So, all right, so the interesting part of video game development, you could add in anything you want if you're porting in old stuff. You're probably, you know, you're probably going to have to put some TLC on it and, you know. TLC. So, you're going to basically, you're going to need some table ladders and chairs. Baka. So, you're going to see that it's probably going to look exactly the same. Instead, with the normal animations you saw on the PS2, they probably just added more frame rates to them to make them smoother. That's probably all they did. That makes sense, they probably, actually. They're probably, they would need to redo the animation they're, they're, they're just, the higher frame yeah, That makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, they're just going to add in more frames per whatever for the animation. And, so uh, that makes all sense, the then. They, they probably wouldn't have changed them otherwise. That probably that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. They probably wouldn't have changed them if they didn't have to. Yeah, they're just going to bring them over, and they're just going to do any TLC that's needed. They, they, might even not, they might not even be new animations. They might just be... They're going to be the same animation. They might just take the, the existing animations and interpolate the extra frames on them, which means they're going to look janky as shit, which... With all the stuff we're hearing about this remaster, wouldn't surprise me. Tell you the truth, though, um, when, once, well, I don't know if it's going to be a leak. <laughs> Whoever the hell puts it on the internet first, I could already tell you, you are going to have people losing their fucking minds going, this isn't a remaster, boycott Rockstar. I could already imagine what's going to happen. I mean, <laughs> people lose their minds To be already. trendy <laughs> with, like, the, the memes that have been going around the last couple of days. When GTA announced the expanded and enhanced edition and didn't show actual PS5 footage. That should have been like that new red flag meme that's going around. Yeah, everybody's posting red flags. And they sh we should have known that it was going to be disappointing when they announced it, didn't say anything about it for like a year, literally a year, never showed footage, talked about it in passing once, where they were like, oh, you'll have new exclusive car upgrades. And that was it. And then they sh act finally showed the trailer, and it's like, oh, it's because it's not that different. And then we again, really, that trailer probably should have been worked a little bit more. Um, I really hope it was an early like thing of that. I'm excited either way, but I love Grand Theft Auto and Grand Theft Auto 5. So that's a, that's a whole other story. But, but the yeah. thing for me is with this is if this is supposed to be coming out in December and it is October 15th. Yeah, it's uh, they announced this without showing anything. It's yep. supposed to be out in a month, a month and a half, GP. Uh huh. And they didn't show a goddamn thing. I'm telling you, they're literally just going to blow their load off. It's going to be like WB2K20. It's going to be exactly... They're going to wait until I, like the last I, possible minute to I show this trailer. The, I hate the... They're going to put it out like on Thanksgiving and hope that no one fucking sees it. Yeah. That everybody's like, spending time with their family. Like, I, like I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but uh, yeah, like, and I hate to compare it to WB2K20. But uh, something tells me it's going to turn into a disaster. And I'm going to be very glad that I'll have the collection that I could always download because it's on my library. So, uh, oh, at the time you watch this, you won't be able to get it anyway. It's going to be on Saturday, and today, Friday, is the last uh, day on the store. I mean, that really sucks. So, uh, if you don't got it, 
Man, that that that. Yeah, unfortunately, sucks. at the time you guys are hearing this, it's the original GTA trilogy late. will be off the off of all modern storefronts. That includes Steam. That's PS. You know all all the places. I don't even know where it exists right now, but probably your only bet at this point would be maybe if you can snag a code on like G2A or websites like that. Uh, but yeah, I'd say uh, even then, like risky business it's kind of funny knowing that i could see people within like the next week sorry i keep cutting you off but i could see people within the next week like scalping their ps4s like oh we have i have the original gta trilogy just on like, here. Just like six thousand dollars just just like when pt yeah pt uh yeah uh, yeah but it's just um it, it's it's sad it really is and uh, all i know is uh rockstar better come out with this Red Dead Redemption remaster, and it better be exactly what people want. Or I'm telling you right now, it, it's you can't fuck them over twice like that with a remaster. If it looks exactly the same, I'm not paying for that shit either. Well, Arthur. Well, Arthur, I got a plan. I got a plan, brother. So we'll see what happens, though. Uh, I'm sure what uh, it's the worst kept secret in gaming. So I'm sure by the week we're gonna find out and talk about it more on here. So stay tuned. It should be. Quite a shit show that it's leading up to. Oh, I'm right? sure we will. I, I, oh, I can't I'm sure wait. we will talk about it extensively when the trailer comes out. I, I think what we should do is we should watch the reveal trailer together. <sighs> right on this podcast for our for our fresh interaction. Just sitting there and just looking. Maybe not the audio on, just looking and... Uh, yeah, because you already know there's going to be copyrighted. Yeah, music so it. we're, we're going to watch it. We will watch it live on the podcast and we'll give our uh, our... Our exclusive comments, and I'm telling you, it's not going to be good, more than likely. So but, get ready. <laughs> but guys, I feel like we've been overwhelmingly negative so far in this episode. And I don't like to do that all the time. So we're going to end on a positive note. And that is that Warzone and Vanguard new Ricochet anti-cheat details release date and more. This is over at Charlie Intel. COD Warzone and Vanguard will receive the new Ricochet anti-cheat system later this year as Activision works to combat hackers. Activision and Call of Duty have announced the first details on the new Ricochet anti-cheat system, which arrives in Call of Duty Warzone and Call of Duty Vanguard later this year to combat cheating and hacking problems that the game has experienced for years. Cheating has become a point of contention among fans of Call of Duty as hacks in Warzone allow players to become invincible, while Black Ops Cold War saw gamers using five weapons at once. While Activision's been banning cheaters and multiple ban waves, fans have been repeatedly calling for a better system to further address the problem. Five weapons at once. What the hell? The creators of Call of Duty have been listening to those cries and have officially announced the new Ricochet anti-cheat system. The system is specifically built from the ground up for the franchise by a new in-house team who are dedicated to maintaining and servicing the system. Ricochet anti-cheat features two separate aspects, a new back-end based update to provide better infrastructure and security, and a PC kernel driver system to directly detect hackers. Before I keep reading the article, could we just talk about how cool the name Ricochet is for an anti-cheat? Yeah, for, 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 for bullets for ricocheting. I think it's uh, I think it's really cool. Um, I think it's coming way too damn late. But oh, 100%. Five, but five, 100%. But five, see, the thing that I don't get is... Does it really matter if you have five weapons in a Call of Duty game? You're only going to use one before you die, more than likely. I mean, is it really that unfair? With, I, I can't even balance two weapons, let alone five. <laughs> I, I don't particularly <laughs> remember ever seeing a video of it. That is mind-blowing. I've seen, definitely seen, like, Aimbot and Wallhack. Yeah, I've, seen, I've in, seen Aimbot War, and stuff. So. I'm just like, five weapons? You need five weapons? I think they just said that just because it's, like a, it's a funny thing, and it's just so dumb. It's just like, what? You just imagine it'd be like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, sir, how do you have all these weapons? Was that a bazooka? What do you mean? Call of Duty's new Ricochet anti-cheat system delivers server level enhancements to provide better backend security and protection against hackers. It'll be available when Vanguard launches on November 5th. Why the fuck did it just move where I was on the page? And arrives with Warzone specific map later this year. In a blog post from Call of Duty, the company states that the Ricochet anti-cheat is a multifaceted approach to combat cheating, with the system's new server-side tools able to monitor analytics to identify cheating. So essentially, like, in the back end, it'll be like, oh, this person is, you know, like, if basically, if your stats are, are suspicious, it's going to flag you for possibly cheating and investigate you further. So if you have too high of a headshot percentage or too high of a KD or too many kills within, like, too many high kill games or, you it's know, your accuracy is like 100 percent and like stuff like that. I can't wait to see how many people 
bitch when they get banned. Oh, oh people yeah. bitch all the time if they get banned. It, it's going to be incredible. I, I, I can't wait. It's going to be cool just drinking their tears. Well, see, the thing is, not right now, and I mean, recently I think they changed it to starting to do IP bans, but for a while they were just doing account bans. So that same person could literally, in just, 10 yeah. minutes, log out, make a new Blizzard account, start up Warzone again, and start cheating. So it's just like... So now the IP's banned or the console... When yeah. it comes to the point, the consequence. And that has nothing to do with the anti-cheat. Yeah. That's like, they recently started doing IP bans when they do IP, uh, ban waves. Probably in preparation for this, but... I, I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing to see all these people bitch drinking their tears, you know. It's going to be cool. On top of the server-side tools, the Ricochet anti-cheat also features a PC kernel-level driver that will arrive in Warzone later this year, with release on Vanguard to come at a later date. The first of its kind in the Call of Duty franchise, the kernel-level driver will assist in the identification of cheaters, reinforcing and strengthening the overall server security. By checking, quote, software and applications that attempt to interact and manipulate Warzone, providing the security team more data to boost security. While the driver itself is only available on PC, Activision says that console players will have, who have crossplay enabled will benefit by extension. Activision has confirmed that the kernel-level driver will be required to play Warzone once it becomes available later this year. Players on PC will be unable to play Warzone if they don't have it installed. <laughs> Activision's also yeah. provided more information on the kernel-level aspect. Here are the key points. Ricochet anti-cheat kernel level driver operates only while playing Warzone on PC. Anti-cheats drivers are not always on. Ricochet driver monitors the software and applications that interact with Warzone. When you shut down Warzone, the driver turns off. <laughs> uh, it's kind of sad that people have to be that horrible at games that they have to cheat. Um, I just think it's funny. I really do. I mean, it's not even about fun anymore. Like People are just serious. Like that's the thing is it's like, like how do you fake. even have fun when you're yeah when you can just lock onto people's heads through walls like i don't understand yeah, how I, don't, it's fun. I understand that like back in the day like hacking ps2 codes and all the like unlock extra stuff yeah, and like have hacking fun and stuff to like the game and mod fun. the game or hacking stuff to like get unused content unused content in a single player game fun. is fun but like if you're hacking in multiplayer hacking to aim mod people and just ruin people's and... shit it's you're first of all you're an asshole second of all nobody likes you third of all Fuck off. Fourth of all. Yeah, it's just, uh, you're horrible. Yeah, you're fake as fuck. You're horrible at games, and I don't know why the hell even people do that shit. Like, I would much, really? I would have much more fun getting my absolute shit kicked in by, like, a team of Call of Duty wannabe, like, pro players than I would have sitting and being able to lock on everyone's head through walls and just sitting there and fucking spraying over and over again. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. But hey, hey if, uh, if, if you want to do it, you're going to get fucked completely. And uh, I, I can't wait. It's going to be revolutionary knowing that COD has anti-cheat. Should have been way sooner, but at, oh, least, 100%. It, this at should, least it's happening. Let's be real. Like, as positive as we're being on this, also, this should have been a thing as when yeah. Warzone launched. Like, this should have came, yeah, came with 18 Warzone 18 months ago. Yeah, it, it, yeah, or during lockdown. Yeah. Well, Warzone launched as soon as lockdown started. Yep. It was March. I don't remember the day. But it was. I'm pretty sure it was March 2020. Yeah. But so hey, it should be interesting. But uh, positive news. Just to kind of finish off the article here, uh, it also says that the team. Wait, wait, hang on. The company states the backend servers also have a system with machine learning software, which will use algorithms to examine gameplay data from the server, helping to identify suspicious behavioral trends and add another layer of security. And they're screwed. This is going to be great to see everyone going off. And then just to Can't wait. end it off, Activision confirmed that Ricochet's anti-cheat server enhancements will be included when Vanguard launches on Friday, November 5th, and will be added to Warzone as part of the Pacific map update later this year. So December. Yeah, so probably when Season 1 launches in December. Man, that's going to be uh, that's gonna be cool, though, just to see, like, hackers just getting pissed. I can already see the YouTube videos going up. I'm, just, I'm ready just to see people get pissed because they're cheating. And... If you're cheating and being fake as fuck, I mean, you're going to get found out. I mean, it doesn't have to be social media. It could be on a game in this case, but you, you'll get found out. And, and I mean, banned. when this thing, I mean, I don't know how they're going to handle these bans, but I mean, it's possible that when it first launches, there will be some bans that are not justified, like some unfair bans. But I mean, that kind of always happens with anti-cheat systems. Like every now and then you'll have like a game that for some reason is just like, oh, and this has nothing to do with Call of Duty, but, like, I've heard stories of, like, oh, sometimes, like, Valorant will think that, like, 
Spotify is a cheating app for some reason, and it'll like ban you. And it's just like Sir, you cheating stuff you're like listening. that. Like usually that stuff gets fixed when they go through community you're support. And it's annoying, but like can't be doing that. so there might be some unfair bans here here and there when it first launches. But it'll get ironed out and then it'd be just funny with Spotify. Hopefully hacking is either completely non existent or at least like drastically cut down. Like realistically Activision's a billion, multi billion dollar company. It should be it should completely be. wiped out. It should be wiped out. We'll see. Yeah. I'm excited. It might actually get me to try Warzone because when if I mean I don't really have that much interest in it. I don't really like battle royales. But yeah, I'm not into that either. Especially when I started hearing about how bad the hacking situation was. I was like, well, even, I don't even have a drive to try to play it because if I'm going to get just murked by some dude across the map that can lock onto my head, I'm not even going to attempt to play because what's the point in playing a match for 20 minutes, looting up, getting kills, moving around the circle, you know, whatever, whatever, just to get to the final four and get like snipe through like six buildings yeah because some guy can lock onto my head you know through it's, walls and shit yeah it's just ridiculous so hey they're gonna get what they deserve and uh that's that's just how it's gonna go it's kind of just funny how it took them this long to do that that is like, definitely like, the sad thing i mean like, like ps2 games had anti-cheat what they should yeah, have done and what they should have done and what i think any multiplayer game should do in the future that plans to not even battle royale just any multiplayer game should what should happen is if even if you plan on making your own anti-cheat license one out from an existing like company first and have that run in your game while you develop your in-house anti-cheat and then eventually you can swap them over yep. because the fact that this ran rampant for how many months 18 months almost is fucked like it's it's fucked the fact that this was going on for how long in keep in mind probably the biggest or one of the top three biggest like most earning publishers in the games industry a multi-billion dollar company and it took them 18 months to do this it didn't take them 18 months to shred documents relating to their lawsuit but that's neither here nor there we won't get into that we won't get into Yep. So this was more of a positive note to end the podcast uh, with Ricochet happening. I'm ready for Vanguard on November 5th. That's the great thing is even if you don't play Warzone, you're still benefiting because it'll be in Vanguard and all the other CODs going forward. Don't know if it'll come to Cold War or anything like that. I'm, I, don't, I don't think that it will. But at least going forward, we can hopefully have uh, hackerless games of Call of Duty. And I read somewhere, yeah. I didn't say that in the article, but I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere that um, if the system flags you as a hacker, it might not instantly ban you, but it might do a thing where it only lets you match make with other potential hackers. Like Grand Theft Auto when yeah. you put in the bad sport lobby. Yeah. So that'll be really interesting to see, a whole lobby of 150 fucking hackers just locking on to everybody's head. Can you imagine 100 people? I'm going to win. Nah. Why? Because I'm in God mode. But I'm in God mode too. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of us is going to win. One of us is going to lose, like, boy. It's like jokes on you. We can't. None of them can actually kill each other because they all have God mode or not. Yeah, I think it's going to be absolutely hilarious. Yeah, hackers are going down, man. I can't even believe it still exists in video games like the way it does. It's disgusting, really. It's... It's Answer honestly gotten awesome. easier. It's gotten easier, Depending too. on the game, but... <laughs> Crazy. But, guys, that is this week's episode of the Hex Phenom Gamescast. It was negative at the start, but we had one last positive story to try to even things out. Yep. And, uh... Yeah, still haven't come up with still a new Still working on that outro? Still working on it. See, JP, I used all of my creative juices. I put every single creative fiber in my body into Another One Bites the Crust. That, that was a really and, damn good, uh, that was a damn good saying. It really was. And I just, I used up all my creative juice on that, and now it's just gone forever. Don't you worry. I think it'll come back one of these episodes. <laughs> See, it was, it was, it was so perfect for what that show was and meant to be as a, as a pizza and gaming podcast. But, uh. Yeah, it could always come back if you want to do streaming or something, maybe. If you're doing Twitch, easily do something like that. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But I always something to think about. Otherwise, I'm going to try to come up with something. If you guys have any 
suggestions and you're on YouTube, leave them in the comments below. Or if you're listening on audio services, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram. G- give me some ideas, because I, like I said, I used all my creative juices on another one bites the crust, and I just, I got nothing. Legendary. But, guys, until next time, Phenom, out.